What if I told you you could lose 10 pounds of fat before the new year and finally see that six pack? All without starving yourself and spending hours and hours in the gym. In today's video, I'm going to show you how fat loss actually works, how to build the perfect nutrition plan, how to create the perfect training plan, how much cardio you should be doing on a weekly basis, and which supplements are an absolute must to use during a fat loss phase. Let's dive straight into the video. Step one, the science of fat loss. What happens and how do we actually actually burn fat. Fat loss occurs when your body breaks down triglycerides or stored fat into glycerol and fatty acids which are then metabolized into stored energy. This process called lipolysis is triggered when you consume fewer calories than you burn, creating an energy deficit. We've all heard the term calorie deficit, this is how it works. So here are the key hormones that play an additional role when it comes to fat loss. You have leptin and ghrelin. Leptin signals fullness whilst ghrelin signals hunger. So as you can imagine if either of these hormones are thrown off, it's going to make your fat loss diet pretty damn tricky. And there are ways where we can keep them nice and balanced. And one of them ways is to focus on sleep quality, but we're gonna get into sleep quality a little later in the video. The next hormone that we need to balance and control is our cortisol. We've all heard of cortisol levels before, and we've heard of them due to our stress levels. Anytime you have elevated stress, you have elevated cortisol. And many studies have shown that elevated cortisol can lead to fat storage. Now, this doesn't mean that it will lead to fat storage whilst you're in a calorie deficit. Of course, you would need to be in a calorie surplus for this to happen. However, it does mean that it can make the deficit and the diet much harder and a little bit slower. So let's jump straight into how we calculate our calories for fat loss. How do we find our starting point? I feel most people should keep it easy and use a calorie calculator and calculating your total daily energy expenditure or TDEE using a calorie calculator is an absolute no brainer. It's easy to use and it's it's pretty accurate. It saves a lot of time and a lot of stress figuring out your calories, figuring out your body weight, just use a calorie calculator. From the number that this calorie calculator gives you after inputting your information, what I want you to do is subtract 500 to 750 calories from that starting number. And this is how we're going to find our fat loss starting point. So if your maintenance is, let's say 3,000 calories per day, this means that we can push our calories as low as 2,250 to find that fat loss starting point. This will be the perfect perfect number for you to work with. But what I want you to remember is don't push past this 750 calorie starting point as we want to avoid extremes. A lot of people, I've seen it firsthand, will drop 1000 plus calories out of the diet in day one. This is something that you definitely want to avoid and I guarantee will not lead to faster results and will arguably actually make you fatter due to levels of binging that can definitely happen. If you're wondering which calorie calculator to use to find all this information out, well, I've linked one in the description below. So give that one a go. Now into step two, and that is building the perfect nutrition plan. We've just found our starting calories. Now let's get the nutrition plan in order to back that up and build it out. So calories are king. You always want to focus on calories. However, macros rule the court. And when it comes to our macronutrients, of course, I'm talking about our proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And these are simply the macronutrients that make up each calorie. Let's start with protein. And this is the macronutrient that is essential for preserving lean muscle mass during a deficit. If you go too low protein, you are at risk of actually losing quite a lot of muscle mass during a diet, so we need to prevent this. Aim for 0.8 gram to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. Definitely no less than this. Remember, what builds a muscle best will maintain muscle best, and high protein definitely builds muscle best. So for an example, if you weigh, let's say, 180 pounds, that's 144 gram, all the way up 216 grams of protein every single day. When it comes to these food choices for your protein, think chicken breast, turkey, white fish, red meats, whey proteins, Greek yogurt, tofu if you're a veggie, and that'll do the trick. What I would say is always pick protein sources that suit you better in terms of your digestibility. So if you're eating a certain protein that doesn't agree with your stomach, then don't eat that food. Keep it simple, eat what works well for you. And that brings us to carbohydrates. And these are the macronutrient that provide all the energy that you need throughout the day and for fueling your workout. Carbs are pretty good as well for keeping you full and helping with any cravings that you might have. And when you're low carb, your performance tends to drop. So make sure that you're prioritizing your carbs around your workouts. And we're gonna get into meal timing in just a little bit. And that leaves us with fats. And fats are there to support hormonal health. Too many people go too low fat and it actually does damage the fat loss phase. But not only that, it damages you internally as well. So we need to be prioritizing healthy fats like avocados, fatty fish, red meats. So don't shy away from these fats. They're definitely needed. And remember, 
that fat doesn't make you fat, a calorie surplus makes you fat. So when it comes to building out your nutrition plan, one thing that I use for all my clients is the 80-20 rule. And you might have heard about the 80-20 rule before. If you have, great. If you haven't, all this means is that 80% of your daily food intake comes from high quality, nutrient dense foods. The other 20% comes from what you would consider less nutritious foods or foods that we would consider fun. But why do we stick to this 80-20 rule? And the answer is actually really simple and that's adherence. The key with any diet is managing appetite and cravings. So if you go all in and 100% of your diet is high quality foods, at some point the cravings are going to get too much and you're probably going to break. We have to avoid that at all costs because binging is the ultimate setback when it comes to your fat loss. So if we can enjoy 20% of our daily intake from foods that we enjoy that are going to help us avoid binging, then that ratio is absolutely perfect. So don't feel bad for enjoying some treat food. See it as a bigger part of the picture and that it's actually really important to eat. So what about meal timing? Does meal timing matter when it comes to building out your nutrition plan? And I truly think that it does. Ultimately, for most people, meal timing might be something that is on the back burner. But if the goal is to create a great body and lose fat fast, then this will only help if we can just dig down and get to some of the nitty gritty detail with meal timing. So what I would recommend is during your pre-workout meals, you want a dose of protein in there. That could be, you know, any meat, it could be a scoop of whey protein, but we need to fill in our carbohydrate intake in that pre-workout meal with at least 25% of your daily carb intake. So if you're eating 200 grams of carbohydrates every single day, then 50 grams of carbohydrates need to be in that meal. That's going to help the performance. It's going to help you fuel that workout. And the better our performance is, the harder we can push in the gym, then the more fat loss we are going to create. And on the flip side of that, when it comes to your post-workout meal, I would also do 25% of your carbohydrates again in order to stimulate recovery, prioritize that rest so that you're fueled, kept full at a time when you're probably hungriest after burning off a lot of energy. And that's going to kickstart that recovery process and allow you to continue to train harder for longer. If we mess with the recovery period and we don't utilize it correctly, then we're probably not going to be able to train as hard as we would like. Remember, the harder we train, the more calories we burn, the more fat loss we accrue. So give these meal timings a go. Don't overthink it. Keep to the 25% rule pre and post, and I guarantee you will see better results. So here's some of my nutrition practical tips for success. And the first one is batch cooking or meal prepping. Just dedicate a couple hours each week to preparing your meals. And what I would say, is don't try to be fancy. Don't try and be a Michelin star chef. Stick to stuff that you know, stuff that's easy to cook, that's not going to take a lot of time, and that you enjoy to eat. This is the key. If you make it overcomplicated, you're adding stress to your life and making this diet phase even harder. Next is volume eating. We want to incorporate high volume, low calorie foods into our diet that are going to keep us fuller for longer. End of the day, we need volume in the stomach. So if we can do our best in eating high protein or eating lots of veggies with every meal, making sure our fruit intake is actually very high, along with that, keeping our liquid intake high, maybe drinking sugar-free drinks. This will do the trick in keeping your stomach full. So keep this in mind. Half the battle when dieting is trying to stay full, trying to not be hungry, trying to not crave foods all day long. So the fuller you can stay, the better it is. So make sure that you are filling your stomach with high volume foods. This is one of the keys to success. Now for step three, strength training. Why should we strength train? Fat loss isn't just about burning calories. It's about body composition. And strength training is very good at preserving muscle mass. Remember when you are dieting, it is possible to lose muscle mass. So we need to do everything we can in order to retain it. And that is going to come from strength training. So the more muscle mass that we can actually preserve, the more calories we're going to burn on a daily basis. More muscle mass on the body equals a faster metabolism. And a faster metabolism equals more fat loss. Think of it this way. For every pound of muscle you gain or retain, your body is going to burn an extra six to 10 calories per day. While this actually might seem small, it adds up a lot all the time, especially when combined with consistent training. The six to 10 calories coupled with pounds upon pounds of muscle mass alongside hours and hours of training every single week equals hundreds of extra calories burned at rest, just doing nothing every week. I don't know about you, but I'd rather burn hundreds of extra calories per day for no reason. So make sure that you strength train very hard. So let's give you a training program to follow. That's what you're here for, right? And I'm going to assume you've got around four days every single week to train. So let's work with that. This program that I have built out is going to be absolutely fantastic for preserving muscle mass and making sure that you look your best at the end of your diet. So I'm going to lay out the structure of it right now. But after that, I'm going to link below in the description the exact training program that you can 
can download for free. It's built for you, so make sure you download it and give it a go. On day one, you're going to train your upper body. So this means push and pull together, chest, back, shoulders, triceps, biceps, all in one session. On a Tuesday, you're going to train legs. So of course, quads, hamstrings, and glutes. Wednesday, you're going to take a rest day. It could be active rest day, go for a walk, do yoga, go for a run, whatever it might be. On Thursday, this leads us to our second upper body session. Again, push and pull, but we'll change the emphasis in what this session is. So on session one of the upper body, we'll have a chest focus. On session two, we're gonna have back focus. On Friday, this leaves us with our secondary leg day, and this will be quads, hamstrings, and glutes again. But rather than have quad focus on the first day, we're having hamstring focus on the second day. This then leaves us to Saturday, which is an active rest day, Sunday, active rest day as well. Following this structure is perfect for the normal person who's trying to build a great body. It's not too much, it's not too little. The structure is fantastic. It's all rounded and it gives you enough training frequency and training volume spread across the week. And half the battle with creating a good training program is making sure that them parts are fulfilled correctly. So remember, it's in the description below. Get yourself a free download of this training plan. So when it comes to your training, we need to apply some key techniques that are going to absolutely maximize it. And the first technique is going to be progressive overload. All the progressive overload is, is tracking your weights and your lifts and making sure that you're progressing every single week. This could be an extra rep. It could be an extra kilo on the bar. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just make sure you're pushing a little bit more every single session. So for example, if you're performing a barbell squat and on week one, you squat 200 pounds for six reps, progressive overload would be 200 pounds for seven reps, or it would be 205 pounds for six reps. It's very simple, but just make sure you're pushing hard. Next is your rest periods. I wanted to address this as when it comes to fat loss, people think less rest equals more fat loss. And this is absolutely not the case. You need to take as much rest as you need to perform your best during each set. Don't rush. Make sure you take enough rest so that you can push hard and lift and maximize the amount of weight you are lifting. If you only rest for 30 seconds and that actually damages the set and you get, let's say, four or five less reps during that set, then I guarantee you're not burning as many calories than if you rest more and get more reps. And this leads us into supersetting, which of course does actually reduce overall time of the workout. Now, supersetting is simply where you pair two exercises back to back to reduce time, but it also increases a good muscular pump and you can use opposing muscle groups for this. So you could do a bench press and a pull up, for example. And it isn't necessary to do, but I do recommend you do it if you're someone who has 45 minutes or less to train every single day. This makes sure that you can get enough training volume in and not miss out on all that vital training just because you're short on time. So in the training plan that I have attached below, it's got all the exercises, sets, reps, technique description. It's got intensity techniques that you should use during every single set. The description is there in full. It's well built. It's what I use for myself. It's what I use for my clients. So again, I recommend you give it a download. Now into step four, let's talk about cardio. Cardio should complement your strength training, not replace it. When it comes to fat loss, too many people think that they need to be doing hours and hours of cardio to see results. And that is absolutely not the case. But what it does do is help create a calorie deficit without relying solely on your diet. And then this is a positive thing, right? But I do feel like some people overuse it. Some people actually underuse it. So let's give you the best cardio plan for getting you a six pack ready for 2025. I recommend you start with three sessions per week. Each of these sessions are going to be 30 minutes long and you're going to perform moderate intensity cardio. So moderate intensity is not too fast. It's not too slow. So it's not walking, but it's not interval training either. Doing stuff like intervals actually leaves you pretty sore and I guarantee will affect your weight training performance. And like I said earlier in the video, if your performance is affected in the gym, then your overall calorie burn and fat loss will be delayed. So performing a moderate intensity ensures that you burn enough calories and you recover well enough. Now you're probably thinking, does it just stay the same all the time? Should I stick with these three sessions per week? And the answer is no. I mean, you could do, but at some point your fat loss is going to plateau. And as soon as that weight stalls and you notice that you aren't progressing as much, I want you to add on one more session of 30 minutes. That would lead you to four sessions of 30 minutes per week. And remember, just gradually increase the duration and frequency of these sessions every time you plateau. If you do this, I guarantee your plateau will not last very long. So just like that, cardio section done. Just like this information, don't overcomplicate it. Just get out there and do it. Now, I've just talked a little bit about plateaus and the adjustments to your cardio. And this leads me nicely into step five, and that is overcoming plateaus with your fat loss. So why do plateaus happen? Why does the scale stop moving? Why do we stop losing fat? Well, your metabolism actually adapts to prolonged calorie deficits. The longer you diet, the more efficient your body becomes at conserving energy. Your body doesn't want to lose fat. Fat is a great and easy energy source for
for it to use. So it does its best to try and hold on to it. So we need to combat this process every time it happens. When this metabolic adaptation happens and things start to slow down. And here are my two main ways on how to always break through a fat loss plateau. Number one is recalculate your deficit. As you lose weight, your maintenance calories decreases. When this happens, you're going to reduce your calorie intake by 200 calories per day. And I guarantee this will ensure that fat loss continues. Don't pull more than 200 calories from your diet though. That'll be too much. 200 is the sweet spot. And then secondly is changing your routine in some format. Adjust your cardio, increase your steps, or making some minor adjustments to your training plan when exercises start to slow down and maybe you're not seeing progress in them areas. Minor changes do go a long way. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You're just trying to get an extra step forward. And I've seen too many people stall with their fat loss and then they just quit. But I promise you the answer is simple. Follow these steps and your fat loss will progress as long as you want it to. Now into step six, prioritizing sleep and recovery. Poor sleep increases the hunger hormone ghrelin and decreases the fullness hormone, which is leptin. And it also impacts your cortisol levels, which can hinder fat loss. We spoke about this earlier. And because of this, we need to keep sleep a priority. You don't want to be mentally battling your hormones because I guarantee you will lose. So here are some strategies for better sleep. The first one is your sleep hygiene. Sticking to a consistent bedtime is really important and getting into a good routine with that. I suggest you limit your caffeine intake after 1 p.m. and keep your bedroom dark and cool. And if you're someone who does struggle to get to sleep, I'd recommend some relaxation techniques. You could try meditation, deep breathing, sleep stories, all this to white, brown noise or something like that. And that leads me into supplements or sleep supplements. If you're someone, again, who struggles to get into a good deep sleep, I recommend using magnesium glycinate or melatonin if you struggle with this area. These supplements help massively and is something I use on a daily basis and notice an absolutely massive difference. So talking about supplements, that leads me into the last step of this process and that is supplements. So let's get straight into the ones that work. The first one is going to be caffeine. It boosts fat oxidization and improves energy for workout. This is an absolute no brainer. However, I don't recommend you use this if you train in the evenings. Then we have protein powder, an easy way to hit your protein goal. It digests well, it's cheap, it's accessible and cooking food isn't always a viable option. And then we've got creatine, which is absolutely fantastic at preserving strength and muscle mass. It's the most researched supplement on the planet. So I recommend you give this one a go. But then here are the supplements that we should skip. First one being fat burners. Most are overpriced and do not work. Then we've got detox teas. Don't know about you, but my liver and kidney handle detoxing just fine. So don't fall for these scams. If something says it can help you lose fat, well, what it's doing, playing on your emotions and trying to make money from you. So don't fall for it. But overall, remember that supplements are just that. They are supplements. Focus on nailing your diet and training first. These are here to support, not replace your efforts. So guys, losing 10 pounds of fat before 2025 is definitely achievable, but it requires consistency, effort, and smart planning. And the principles we've covered, nutrition, training, recovery, and mindset aren't just for temporary fat loss. They're a blueprint for lifelong health and fitness. So remember, it isn't just about the next few weeks before the new year. It's about building good habits for a lifetime of health and confidence. So here's some actionable takeaways for the video. First one is start small. Pick one or two habits to work on this week. Second one is track everything, food, workout, steps, progress. And then lastly, we have stay patient. Fat loss is never linear, but it is always worth it. So guys, if you found this video helpful, maybe consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, that's it from me and I'll see you in the next video.